My brothers and sisters, this is an emergency message that is extremely important and needs to get out as soon as possible. We have a crisis situation on our hands and it is nearly too late to prepare for it. My brothers and sisters, I said in my video, are we really ready for a Sunday law? That Satan has been distracting us with the movements and statements from the Pope and other world leaders as to dates and times of meetings and the rollout of certain government and worldwide programs. I said that all of that was by design to keep Adventists looking to the future, not realizing that they were literally running out of time. My brothers and sisters, I'm going to share with you right now exactly where we are in time and how much time the earth has left. My brothers and sisters, this information is not new. But like other truths recently brought to light, Satan has managed to hide the reality of the nearness of time through distractions and arguments over whether or not timelines can be reapplied and whether or not the 2520 is legitimate. Between these timelines and all the meetings held by the Pope regarding climate issues, this has engulfed almost the entirety of Adventist concern on time. This is a picture of a King James Bible that was printed in the year 1814. This Bible, and many like it at the time, had a section in it called a chronological index of the years and times from Adam to Christ. In this Bible was a detailed list in chronological order of all the births and significant events the Bible recorded that accurately gives the amount of years from Adam to Christ. The following chronology is from the first edition of the King James Version of the Bible printed by Philadelphia printer Matthew Carey in 1801. The chronology given largely follows that of Reverend James Usher's Annals of the World. First published in 1658, Usher's chronology divided the world's history into six ages, from creation to the fall of Jerusalem. Carey's Bible has a heading noting the first age, but there are no headings for, ensuring, for ensuing ages. From clearly marks the beginning of each age, however. From Adam unto Noah's flood are years 1,656. From when Adam was 150 years old, he begat Seth. Seth being 105 years, begat Enos. Enos being 90 years, begat Canaan. Canaan being 70 years, begat Mahaliel. Mahaliel being 65 years, begat Jared. Jared at the age of 162 begat Enoch. Enoch being 65 years begat Methuselah. Methuselah at the age of 187 begat Lamech. Lamech being 182 years begat Noah. Noah at the coming of the flood was 600 years old as appeareth in the seventh chapter of Genesis. The whole sum of the years are 1,656. From the said flood of Noah unto Abraham's departing from Chaldea were 422 years and 10 days. For the said flood continued one whole year and 10 days. Shem, which was Noah's son, begat Arphazad two years after that. Arphazad begat Salah when he was 35 years old. Salah, being 30 years old, begat Eber. Eber, at the age of 34, begat Peleg. Peleg, being 30 years, begat Ryu. Ryu, being 32 years, begat Serug. 
Serug, being thirty years, begat Nahor. Nahor, being twenty-nine years, begat Terah. Terah, being a hundred and thirty years, begat Abram. And Abraham departed from Chaldea when he was seventy years old. These accounted are four hundred and twenty-two years and ten days. From Abraham's departing from Ur and Chaldea unto the departing of the children of Israel are four hundred and thirty years, gathered as followeth. Abraham was in Sharan five years, and departed in the seventy-fifth year, begat Isaac when a hundred years old, in the twenty-fifth year of his departing. Isaac begat Jacob when sixty years old. Israel was in Egypt two hundred and twenty years. Then deduct eighty years from this, for so old was Moses when he conducted the Israelites from Egypt. So the rest of the years, that is to say, a hundred and thirty, are divided between Amram and Kohath. Then Kohath begat Amram at the age of sixty-seven. Amram, being sixty-five years, begat Moses, who in the eightieth year of his age departed with the Israelites from Egypt. So this chronology is the 430 years mentioned in the 12th chapter of Exodus and the 3rd chapter to the Galatians. From the going of the Israelites from Egypt unto the first building of the temple are 480 years after this chronology and account. Moses remained in the desert of or wilderness for 40 years. Joshua and Othniel ruled 40 years, Ehud 80 years, Deborah 40 years, Gideon 40 years, Abimelech 3 years, Tola 23 years, Jair 22 years. Then they were without a captain until the 18th year of Jephthah, Jephthah 6 years. Ibzan seven years, Elon ten years, Abdon eight years, Samson twenty years, Heli judge and priest four years, Samuel and Saul reigned forty years, David was king forty years, Solomon in the fourth year of his reign began the building of the temple. These are the 480 years mentioned in the first book of Kings, chapter 6. From the first building of the temple until the captivity of Babylon are 419 years and a half. Solomon reigned yet 36 years. Rehoboam, 17 years. Abijah, 3 years. Asa 41 years, Jehoshaphat 25 years, Jehoram 8 years, Ahaziah 1 year, Athaliah the queen 7 years, Joash 40 years, Amaziah 29 years, Uzziah 52 years, Jehoahaz 16 years, Ahaz 16 years, Hezekiah 29 years, Manassas 55 years, Amon 2 years, Josiah 31 years, Jehoaz 3 months, Eliakim 11 years, Jehoachin, Jechonias 3 months, and here beginneth the captivity of Babylon. The sum of these years are 419. Jerusalem was re-edified and built again after the captivity of Babylon 70 years. The captivity continued 70 years. The children of Israel were delivered the first year of Cyrus. 
the temple was begun to be built in the second year of the said Cyrus and finished in the 46th year, which was the sixth year of Darius. After that, Darius had reigned 20 years. Nehemiah was restored to liberty and went to build the city, which was finished in the 32nd year of the said Darius. All the years from the building of the temple again are 26 years. The whole sum of years amount to 70. From the re-edifying of the city unto the coming of Christ are 483 years after this chronology. It is mentioned in the ninth chapter of Daniel that Jerusalem should be built up again and that from that time until the coming of Christ are 69 weeks and every week is reckoned for seven years. So 69 weeks amount to 483 years. For from the said year of Darius until the 42nd year of Augustus in which year our Savior Christ was born, are just and complete so many years, whereupon we reckon that from Adam unto Christ are 3,974 years, six months and ten days, and from the birth of Christ unto this present year is 1,814 years. Then the whole sum and number of years from the beginning of the world unto the present year of our Lord God, 1814, are 5,788 years, six months, and the said odd ten days. Now, my brothers and sisters, from the year 1814 to the year 2022, is 208 years. When we add 208 years to the 5,788 years, we get 5,996 years, six months in the said odd 10 days. My brothers and sisters, we are already nine months into the year 2022. So those six months and 10 days push us into 5,997 years of Earth's history. That means, my brothers and sisters, that there are less than three years before the 6,000 year mark. My brothers and sisters, do you understand what that means? That means that everything that we know is still to come in the future has to take place within three years. That's the full outpouring of the latter rain, the Sunday law crisis, the loud cry and martyrdom, Satan impersonating Christ, and the seven last plagues in Jacob's time of trouble. But remember... Christ said that the time would be shortened or no flesh would survive. The shortening of time could be a couple of months to a year or more. So less than three years can now be two years or less. My brothers and sisters, are you hearing me? That's two years to the close of this earth's history. Not two years to a Sunday law, but two years for everything. I've seen some presentations where some suggest that the seven last plagues could be stretched out over a year. That could mean that from the enforcement of the National Sunday Law to the general close of probation could be only a year's length of time. In my video titled, Are You Really Ready for a Sunday Law? I show how quickly the world was brought together under the name and number of the beast, which were masks and social distancing and the vaccine, and how the mark of the beast could easily be implemented and debated all within the span of a few short months. My brothers and sisters, we are literally out of time, and I have talked with people who are still making plans to build a country home months to a year out.
We have no more time. My brothers and sisters, the sealing and early outpouring of the latter rain has been taking place since April 30th of this year, 2022. That time is finished, and you are going to see pretty soon the full outpouring of the latter rain and the loud cry being given. That is no different, my brothers and sisters, than when Sister White said that the latter rain would be pouring on hearts all around, but many would not discern or receive it. That prophecy has been fulfilled. My brothers and sisters, we are officially out of time, and Satan was waiting to catch the vast majority of us sleeping without oil in our lamps like the foolish virgins. We are here, my brothers and sisters, and many of us have our sights now set on events in December when we don't have days to spare right now in September for preparation. My brothers and sisters, behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. This is not time setting. No man knows the exact day and hour when Christ is going to return, but what we do know is that at the most we have less than three years. That's three years if Christ doesn't shorten the time. So it's going to be even less than that. And my brothers and sisters, if we have that short of a time, just to the end of the world, how much time is left for everything else that must happen? My brothers and sisters, here's the crux of the matter. A door is shutting on Adventism, and another door is opening for the rest of the world. That warning was given three and a half years ago in David Gates' Even at the Door message. It was followed up by my message called Last Warning to Seventh-day Adventists Before the Sunday Law. At that time, my brothers and sisters, we were in the last seven years of Earth's history. Just like God has been preserving the Ten Commandments in the Ark to bring them out from their hiding place as a testimony to the world of God's law, he has also maintained a 209-year-old Bible that had a detailed account of the chronology of the world, so that now, here at the end of the world, we would know with a certainty that we don't have much time left. My brothers and sisters, this isn't a warning message to get right and ready. This is a message for those with oil to trim their lamps and to begin giving the loud cry. 